walk away from this with to actually take back into your organization and do some, some real planning and engagement. And so we, one of the things we generally ask folks to think about at the end of the day, and what we'll do instead is to sort of um, ask you to think about it a little bit yourself, but you have to promise to really do it, <laughs> is you have in your packet, um, a, I think, a template that talks about 30-day, 60-day, and 90-day steps. Thinking about all the things that we talked about today, we're just going to identify a few that we think are really, really important that should be, if you haven't started them already, you should really start them in the very near future. So some of these I'm going to give you and some of them you're going to give me. We're just going to shout them out. I'm not going to run around and pick on you. Um, but looking at your IT systems and beginning a process to evaluate whatever system you have in place or don't have in place, is it going to be able to meet your needs for the foreseeable future, knowing many of the th requirements that are going, you're going to have to meet around providing data and reporting. Not everybody who delivers an HCBS service needs an electronic health record tomorrow. Um, there, are, there are other solutions, there are ways. We've talked about outsourcing, we've talked about, um, there's care management records that work very well in some instances, depending on your service array. Down the road, ultimately, some version of an electronic record will likely be necessary to really interface in all of the ways that we've talked about because you're not going to be able to deliver services um, you know, on an island. No matter what your services are that you're delivering, they're going to need to be integrated within a larger network, whether it's a health home care coordination network or integrated with primary <coughs> care and other behavioral health services. There's going to be some level of integration, which means what you're doing and the information about your services and the people you're serving has to be able to be exchanged in some way with other people who are serving the same individuals, whether whatever services they're providing. So that those data systems, those health IT systems, critically important. Talking to your board, absolutely one of the key and, and quintessential next steps to make sure that they're with you along the way and they understand what's coming and they're partnering with you and you're making sure they're, you know, they're being helpful to you in navigating this. Um, definitely thinking about your connections and your partnerships with each other. Hopefully you've talked to a bunch of other providers in the room who are in similar situations to you today who are navigating all of this and who you are now able to call when you get back to your agency and think through. And even if it's just partnering, like complaining about you know, all the change and what's going on. That's one way to partner and to be supportive for one another. But there are a lot of others. We talked about consolidating back office functions. We talked about evaluating um, you know, whether or not forming certain more formal associations like um, managed service organizations or IPAs or other associations that can help you come together to f find economies of scale and to navigate building or um, creating the infrastructure necessary for you to do the things you need to do for managed care. These are the questions you want to be thinking through and, and starting sooner rather than later is really, really important. Any other things that when you get back to the office you feel like you heard today that you're like, okay, I need to get on this. I need to get started. I'm going to do this within the next.